Hi, this is the second half here of the uh, a tutorial on the A-plus certification, and we're talking about the visible computer itself. Now we're going to get into the motherboard. We're talking about the exterior, uh, the back, the front, um, basically uh, just the outside portion of the, of the actual machine. Now we're going to get into the inside portion. I'm going to first start with the CPU chip itself, which is considered or called the central processing unit. Okay? Um, that's what CPU stands for here, as it even mentions here. Um, they're also called a microprocessor, as it were. So keep that in mind. It's, uh, these are two names that have been used for the CPU chip, or they also call it the brain. Now, they're talking, they talk a lot about how uh, the machine itself or the CPU itself does get heat. It says uh, it generates a lot of heat and it requires a cooling fan or a heat sink to assemble uh, heat sink assembly to avoid overheating. Um, once it gets overheated, it's, there's no coming back. It's just damage. You do have to replace it. You cannot repair a CPU chip. Um, a lot of uh, devices, matter of fact, almost every device you know that is electronic has a CPU chip of some sort. Not otherwise, it wouldn't be able to, to operate. Now, we have different ones out there now. We have the uh, C, uh, the Core i7, as mentioned, the AMD, the Phenom. Um, also, we have Celeron processors, and we have uh, the Athlon processor, uh, which is mentioned before. Now, this is a demonstration of what they uh, what it looks like. Here's here's what they look like. Now, they all have different types of uh, architecture, uh, how they sit or be, are seated in a motherboard. We have the uh, um, the socket. There's different different socket types and uh, there's also some that are cards. Those are the older models. They, I think they stopped making those. I don't, I don't see any more of those. But um, the uh, the new iCore series uh, have developed a different way of uh, uh, of uh, well basically similar. They're still using the socket but they're a, um, a processor that, that has a couple processors, basically, more of a dual core. Okay, now we have um, uh, the heat sink and the fan that we're talking about. The heat sink is this item right here underneath the fan. It looks like a, uh, a bunch of little cards. Um, it's basically blades of metal. And what it does is draws the heat away from the chip in itself so that instead of the, the chip being hot, the heat sink is. But the heat sink still needs to be cooled off also, so it draws the, the heat away by means of an aluminum, it's basically made out of aluminum, that's what all heat sinks are made out of. And the fan itself will, of course, take that heat by blowing it out of the machine itself. And uh, since aluminum cools very quickly when it's, uh, when, me when air is pushed up against it, it is uh, probably a, the perfect uh, mechanism to use to cool a CPU. Okay, again, there are different models. It says there's hundreds of models of CPUs, which over the years there there has been many that were, were made. So uh, uh, again, the CPU chip is very, very uh, unique, has very, very unique designs. Now we also have, <clears throat> now they're talking about the socket here again. Uh, the, the socket basically allows it to fall into place. It's pins basically on, on the bottom of the CPU chip, you basically just drop it in, and those chips, those, uh, excuse me, those pins, they meet the bottom portion of the arch architecture on the motherboard, and it allows it to basically fire. Uh, the, each pin will uh, process data and whatnot. Um, and there's a there's a handle in the back that allows it to uh, to lock in a place so it becomes stationary and won't move even if the case moves. So that is one unique thing with the uh, design of that. Um, it, it, coupled with the CPU, you d definitely need what they call memory, or random access memory, RAM, for that matter. Um, this particular uh, piece of device um, that goes into your machine is also deemed as uh, DIMMs. Um, they used to be SIMs at one point in time. Uh, just to give you a comparison, that uh, there was a 26 megabit uh, a stick of, sim of SIMs, which basically are very small sticks, and uh, it was a, it's equivalent in pricing well, back then it was equivalent in pricing to what we have here, the 2 gigabit sticks, as far as the prices, they're equivalent. So it lets you know how far we come. And if you don't know the history of how or the mathematics behind uh, uh, the size of memory or, for that matter, for anything as far as memory is concerned um, or storage, um, 1,024 kilobits is equal to 1 megabit and 1,024 megabits is equal to 1 gigabit and 1,024 gigabits is equal to 1 terabyte, and so on and so forth. 
Okay, so keep that in mind uh, when when uh, knowing the the math behind that. Okay, and these are some these are basically some pictures of what random access memory is. Ballistic is, is a very good uh, company to use. Um, again, right here it says crucial basically is the actual manufacturer. That's just their their version. Uh, or model, I should say. There's different ones out there like Kingston, um, Ten, I think Tendra or Trenda, something like that. Uh, there's there's a bunch of different models uh, out there, companies that make RAM. Um, uh, you just basically have to try them all out. You know, some, some time in your history or in your uh, journey of learning to be a tech, and uh, of course, based on other people's history, I should say. Um, it, you could probably use their advice on what's a better one, but I haven't. I, I think they're all basically the same. Some, of course, operate faster than others based on their the technology. So you you do have to look into that and read up on it. There's different versions. <clears throat> now the motherboard. This is basically the this is the guts of the machine. Uh, we we have um, every peripheral. Everything connects to this. This it comes down to the motherboard. Okay. Um, there goes a heat sink on there, maybe on top of some other transistors and whatnot. Um, let's just go ahead and try to outline what uh, what is what on the motherboard. Now, there's a couple of ports that, uh, or excuse me, connectors that go to the power supply. There's one right here, and there's one right here. This one mainly is a power fan, and this one here is mainly to power the entire board, everything. Um, <clears throat> well, I should say the entire board, but not th some of the peripherals that connect to it. Now, there will be uh, what they call a PETA. And which this right here, PETA data cable cords go here. Sometimes people use IDE, but that's not correct. Um, they are color coded. Notice that they one looks darker than the other. Um, they are uh, universal. Uh, the primary PETA um, uh, PETA connector port there, <coughs> is, excuse me, port is going to be blue. So keep that in mind. And then there we also have what they call SATA, um, and that one is right here. And it is basically a very thin cord, much smaller than its, uh, I should say, the grandfather of all, which is the uh, PETA. Um, and it's basically for new type of hard drives now, okay, for more smart drives. Now, this is where that RAM that we were talking about earlier, the random access memory, the, the DIM modules go here. There's four in this case, and of course they got a snap in. You see that they have this notch right here. Keep in mind, the notch is uh, specific to the type of RAM that needs to be used. There's different types of DIMMs out there, so you can't use every DIMM. Excuse me. You can only use some, uh, or you can only use uh, one in particular that goes with this particular board. Okay. You do have to do the research to find out what that is. Usually, they will list it. With that said, this particular part of the machine right here is where the CPU, the central processing unit we talked about, went. Now, if you remember, all of the ports here on the back, we have your audio ports, we have your your network RJ45 uh, port. Your USB, you have, uh, yeah, that could be a, looks like USB on the top, and I think the bottom one possibly is FireWire, I could be wrong. We have your serial port, that basically uh, houses your modem or mouse, an older style. This is made an older board. We also have your DB25 connector, um, which, again, that could be for a printer. And this looks maybe like an SP uh, DIF type of, uh, yeah, that is a port, SPDIF port there. And then you also have uh, your uh, your mini DINs. <clears throat> and these mini DINs also, again, like I told you before, are also called PS2. So keep that in mind, not to be mistaken with PlayStation 2 if anyone asks. Again, you have all these other little things in here. These are resistors or whatnot. You'll never have to mess with one unless one breaks off, which that... I've never seen that happen. So, and this is it looks like uh, this does require maybe one jumper, but nowadays they make boards what they call them jumperless key or jumperless jumperless motherboards. <clears throat> okay, now there's a couple other slots on here. These little ones right here can be used for modems. Uh, the the terminology behind these are called expansion slots. All of these are, um, but some are used for different things. This is an AGP expansion slot. These are PCI expansion slots. So basically, only PCI cards, AGP. Um, and there's different architectures out there for modems. Um, that, okay, now we also have here the battery. Now the battery is what they call CMOS, and that allows you to um, save your data, your settings. Not all your data, obviously, but just your settings. So whenever you log into the machine, it remembers where you left off. How, what is what was your unique, customized way of having your uh, operating system? Okay, that's basically what that's for. It's not really telling you anything. Major, you know, it saves it all basically in the uh, uh, in your um, I want to say your post, but that's not that's not the terminology I'm looking for. 
uh, but basically in your 